Okay. For those of you who don't know me, I am Bob Coppage, uh, CEO, Grand Poobah, Simplex AT, and I'm joined by Max. And Max, I apologize, Jekyll? Jackal? Yes, yes, actually. Very close. A lot of people will say Jackal, but there's no CK. It's just the case. So Jekyll it is. Okay, cool. With Avic, who's one of our partners uh, that we use when we're either talking about our pure MSP, where we take over the entire, I take over is the wrong word, where we deliver the entire IT experience to our clients or our co-managed. Uh, and Ovik is a great tool, and uh, he volunteered or drew the short straw, it's kind of hard to tell, uh, to uh, join us on this conversation. Absolutely. Cool. And I think awesome. you're going to drive the presentation, right, as far as the... Yep. I am. So I'll use you as a test, Bob. Are you able to see my screen right now? Yes, I can. Phenomenal. Well, let's get this thing kicked off. So fighting the cost of slow networks. I should just click that screen. So like Bob just mentioned, so it's going to be in the format of 30 by 30, which I'm new to this as well, but I really like the uh, the format of the discussion. So 30 minutes of us talking to you and sharing where our uh, our point of view and then 30 minutes of the open discussion where we can hear from you. Your input is extremely valuable and we want that to be shared with us and everyone else here. And note that only the presentation portion is going to be uh, shared on YouTube. So if you say anything particularly embarrassing in the 30 minutes of open discussion, the whole internet won't get to see it. Unless it's really, really. Uh, unless it's a little caveat on that. If it's really funny, we might submit it to a few channels. Just saying. <laughs> and and here's, the, here's the thing, is that we're going to try to thread the needle here on this. We're talking, and, and you'll notice we're not going to get really deep in the weeds as far as the tech side of it. Uh, but we want to talk about with the internal IT people, uh, IT managers, whatever, and who are facing that issue of slow networks. But we also want to talk to CEOs because both of you from different perspectives face that same challenge. One, in terms of it's your job to manage the network, but CEOs in terms of it's it hurts the performance of the overall organization. So we're going to try to be value, adding value to both types of folks who are attending. And then anyone else who, if you're interested uh, in managing opti optimization and networks. Yeah, absolutely. It's too big of a conversation to not address today, especially with the environment that we're put in, with what happened last year with COVID and how we're moving forward in the future. This discussion is becoming up, uh, opened up to more and more individuals. Um, it's not just the IT managers who need to know about this now. It's almost more and more people in the organization are being drawn to the conversation. So again, anyone who manages the optimization of your networks, there's something in here for you as well. Cool. So what are you even going to learn on the call today? So the meat of the call is going to be really figuring out why having the full understanding of the network is critical and really getting that appreciation for the scope of the IT management role. Um, IT managers work an extremely unique job where they have to be a people manager and a tech expert. And the bearing of those two individual roles is very difficult to say the least. So figuring out how to do that with purpose and how to do that correctly is absolutely essential to good network management. As well as today, we're gonna to give you some real steps so that you can actually fight the cost of slow networks. So this isn't just a call where we say, hey, this is awesome, you can do everything, but you'll have to actually pay to do it. We're actually gonna give you some stuff that you can do today and take back with your own organizations to fight the, these costs today. Cool. And that's what the core of all the webinars that, that Simplex Idea, IT does, and actually a lot of the stuff that Ovid does as well. We want you to walk away not with the feeling that you just got a 30-minute sales pitch. Absolutely no. We want to deliver real solutions that you can take back and use today. Yep. So, again, just a bit of a rundown of who's talking right now. Uh, Bob is uh, the gentleman who's the actual uh, multi-title author. He's the self-prescribed geek consultant, IT director. Um, and then there's me. I'm a, the young buck, Avic professional and success leader. Um, my uh, my kind of role over at Avic is I'm a, a success manager. So I manage the success portfolios for 200 plus uh, Avic partners. And it's uh, hectic to say the least, but you guys see a lot of individual situations and uh, different types of ish tech issues that these uh, different partners deal with. So a lot of that I'll be able to share with you guys today on specific ways that we can help, um, help target some of those uh, areas that we need to cover and make sure that, again, you get real value out of the conversation. And, and I'm, I'm going to interject two things here. One uh, is that Max was a great representation. So we, this is a very different presentation than normally happens 
from the vendors uh, such as Avic or the like, because we're really talking about you and your your experiences and all that kind of fun stuff. And Avic and specifically Max were great at working with us to specialize this presentation. So I know that whether it's watching this on YouTube or, or actually participating it, there may be some other MSPs here. Don't be afraid to reach out to Avic uh, and use Max as your poster child uh, to have this type of presentation because we think this is a great way to, to talk to your potential clients. So. Absolutely. Now, without further ado, enough about us. Let's get into what's going on. So, by and large, the reason why you're here is to fight the cost of slow networks. But what did the ideal, what does the ideal network look like, and where where are the benefits of it at the beginning of the day, so we can look for that gold standard to shoot for? Well, obviously, when your connections work, everyone can be productive. You have Hack your employees, less frustration about the devices you're using, the programs you're using, and how you get information across systems. Greater efficiency, so you have less downtime. Most of the cost of your network, the highest cost of your network can come from having that downtime and not being able to address it properly. Um, and, and to add to that, when we, when we talk from the CEO perspective, we need to do more with less. And, and one of the biggest challenges a lot of us have uh, in this world is holding on to the good employees. And one of the ways you can really get rid of good employees is not give them the tools necessary to do the job. And absolutely, we want to make sure they have a good computer. Absolutely, we want to make sure that it's got enough horsepower and all that. But if all of the devices that go into connecting all of these pieces together aren't performing as well, then they're going to be end up being frustrated. And especially when you look at it from a security standpoint, because we're adding all these additional layers of security tools and protocols and processes, which are absolutely critical, but they impact the network as well. And so when people start complaining, my system is slow, my network is slow, that makes them less productive and the good employees are gonna get annoyed because they can't do what you're paying them to do. Absolutely, and take it from someone who works with partners on a regular basis, the number one reason why um, engineers will leave an organization is because they don't have the tools on hand to do the job uh, as they deem proper. Um, I can tell you that I've worked with partners who have forced to shrink their businesses because they weren't able to adapt to the proper tools. So the engineers left for a company that would have the proper tools to be able to do the job. So being forward thinking about that is um, what a direction you need to, it, it's not a nice to have anymore. It's definitely something you need, it needs to be on your roadmap to consider moving forward. So this ties in of course, to the, the increased collaboration. So especially when you have diverse systems, one of the biggest things about your network is information flowing from one device to another, especially in um, for IT, it's, we, you have very specific data that needs to go from one device to another. It's critical that it gets there safely and it gets there wholly. And any sort of disruption to the network can cause a break in this or cause this to be disrupted. And that creates inefficiencies, drives frustration, and ultimately drives your higher costs from trying to mess around and try to fix this in the first place. And of course. And you, add, and you add to that, in some cases, this stuff creeps up on you. Yes. You can have situations where your network starts out pristine and it's wonderful because it's only got X devices on it, but then you start adding. You start adding a couple of workstations over here, some wireless access points over here, some switches here, you add whatever. And slowly but surely, the performance, reliability, security, stability, all those good things we want of your network start going downwards, but nobody says it happened over the weekend because it's happened mm -hmm. literally over months. Absolutely. So actually on that note, what are, what are we looking at some of the costs of having a slow network? So some slow networks really do rob you of your most valuable resources. They, uh, for example, bandwidth hoggers. How do you know all the devices on your network are using the same amount of data equally? How do you know some aren't hogging network resources that could be repurposed for other areas? Or how do you know you don't have a device connected somewhere in a back network closet that's a potential security vulnerability? Um, having understand your network isn't just an option anymore. It's positive and critical in this day and age to be able to get as much utilization of your resources and put towards something productive at your organization. And let's add another dimension to that because here we're talking about individual devices that are causing these situations, but it could be these individual devices are causing these situations only at particular times or partic during particular events. Mm -hmm. 
So how many of us have had a network slows down every Thursday at two o'clock for an hour? You know, or a situation happens and it happens just abruptly and then it goes away and we have no idea why. Was that a breach? Was that a rogue device? Was it whatever? We don't know what we don't know. Absolutely. And it's often the cost of slow networks aren't up front. You're not getting a bill from your network provider every day saying, hey, you use the network inefficiently. We're going to bill you differently this time. It's those slow creeping costs that come up over time that slowly drain uh, your IT resources. Um, and sometimes these aren't even financial productivity cuts. If you can't have connected systems that work properly, how are your employees supposed to collaborate properly? How are how is work supposed to be shared and how do you ultimately move forward in a manner that's efficient and works for your business? It all starts with the IT and having a good understanding of what's going on in the network and how to address these issues when they do pop up. So cool. now, how did we even get here? So naturally, we're not putting the blame on you for all this happening because we understand you have a lot to manage. Um, IT teams, especially IT managers, are a critically underrated a position in organizations due to the wide kind of scope of their role. Uh, they have to manage the individual different employee skill sets on their team. They have to manage different individuals as well as all sorts of different aspects of their job, which might include internal IT projects, different types of devices, or device vendors. Bob, I'm sure you can fill in and describe how much of a taxing role it is to have yourself spread so thin across so many different areas. Well, technically, I can't because they won't let me touch the technology. Ah, here. Fair, fair enough, fair enough. You know, but 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 the, but it's actually a, a great point when we talk about the general IT. And, and mind you, a lot of this conversation is aimed at that SMB world, small medium business. So you can't afford to have, let's say, a Cisco engineer to understand how the Cisco infrastructure works. Oh, by the way, it's not just Cisco because the switches are Cisco, but the firewall is Sophos or H, you've got HP switches over here, but you've got Meraki over here, all of that kind of fun stuff. So you're left with this, how do you manage and understand all of these things, or at least be able to see them when you've got different vendors, different types of technologies, and it's all changing. So you may have a technology that hasn't been updated in two or three years and the like. And then you've also got not only the internal demands, but the demands for change, both in terms of increased security, as well as anybody heard work from home just once too many this week or work <laughs> from anywhere? It's not going away. Well, absolutely not. It's one of the big things moving forward. I know, I mean, even personally, I can share with Avik, my organization's not going back to work once stuff opens up. The office will be a drop-in location, but Moving forward, I will have a device where I can work remotely from now on. And thinking forward, you have to think about how do I manage the network of tomorrow? How do I think about dis um, disparate employees trying to log into a centralized network from their own homes when they have their own devices in their own homes managing the way they interface with the network and the internet? These kind of forward thinking questions, we might not have all the immediate answers for as, as a whole of society today, but thinking about the answers moving forward is imperative and will set you apart as an organization um, in the future dealing with networks. So cool. along with, oh, I'm sorry, Bob. No, I'm just agreeing with you. I'm sorry if that sounded weird. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so along with this, we also understand that your IT team split into a bunch of different areas besides a bunch of different focuses. So the question is, how should you focus your time and efforts? And the unfortunate answer is, you have to focus on all these areas because neglecting one area will only make the problems worse in others. For example, if we look at infrastructure management, if you have poor infrastructure management, but your security is fantastic, it won't matter too much because you won't be getting on your devices anytime soon. Or let's do the flip side. Your infrastructure is fantastic. You have all the devices set up. Their warranties are up to date. You understand their information but you have really shoddy security. So you're always vulnerable to potential attacks or potential bad actors getting into the system or even just inefficient use of the network where you have, might have employees, not to nitpick on what the employees do per se, but if an employee is doing an inefficient use of network resources, it could be a significant draw on your company network during hours where they really should be doing something more forward thinking for the organization. Absolutely, and you'll notice that even here, we're not even talking about the productivity side of the end users. 
here we're, we're kind of talking about the plumbing and the managing and making sure all the trains are running on time and all of that kind of fun stuff. But every one of these, I could point to every one of these, these icons here and talk about specialized training that is either available or preferred in terms of the skills that, that are used to deliver the, these services. And small, medium businesses, you don't have that kind of time and resource. No, no. Although, again, it's essential to go, uh, cover all these things. So yeah. the real question is now, what can we actually do about this? If I've got so many different focuses I have to have in my IT role and so many areas to cover, what are some things I can actually do about this? So enough being around the bush, let's get to some real solutions. So for the first five here, let's start with the top one. Keep an airtight record of logging credentials. So key network devices obviously have logging credentials to figure out um, different health aspects of the device or different um, information about the device, such as software version, firmware version, warranty uh, dates, et cetera, et cetera. Now, why is it important to keep an airtight record of this? Well, when you need to actually log in to see the health of a device or to triage a device, trying to find that record when you need to log in at that moment is not the time to go looking for that record. That is an, it's an inefficient use of time, and especially if the issue on that device is time sensitive, you can't afford to be running around trying to find these records to begin with. So keeping an airtight record, keeping a consistent place where you can securely store your logging credentials so that if you do have an issue with the device, you can go into and easily access that device right away with the credentials. It makes the difference in crunch time. Cool. And then backup device configurations. Often, especially when you maintain warranties with the, with the uh, manufacturer, their solution is to replace the device. In which case, if you don't have a good backup configuration of that device, yeah, then the second one is factory reset. Without that backup, you have to rebuild everything from scratch. And often we don't have the documentation, or excuse me, companies don't have the documentation, let alone a backup of, of the configuration. So I've said it, and I've said it a ton of times, the uh, final strategy for all IT issues is a good backup. And backup for your uh, devices here is no exception to that. Yeah, and just to add on to that, it's um, sometimes it's not even replacing the device that right for network stability reasons that backup device configurations are important. I deal with partners all the time who have switches get knocked out by inclement weather. And in order to replace that switch, they've got to get that new switch in and get the configuration reloaded. Now, it can take a few hours to get that configuration re, uh, reprogrammed and put back in place just the way it was. Or my partners who have the backup device configuration, they're able to slot that in immediately. Um, example, a great uh, example of this was we had a school that had a it was had a thunderstorm pass through it, knocked out a key switch. They're able to put a new switch in, upload the backup device configurations, and have that switch running faster than they had the elevators back online. So, it's when it come push comes to shove. In critical moments, preparation can make the difference and can reduce those costs of having your network be down. Absolutely. So. And then business continuity plan. Here's one where, and, and this goes way, this transcends all of the, the network conversation that we're having here. But one thing I want to focus on here is what happens if a device fails? Single points of failure. And in some cases, especially on the switches or the firewalls or the like, the answer is, we're in deep trouble until we get the replacement device. Make sure that's from the IT standpoint, the internal IT folks standpoint, make sure that's communicated to management. And you wanna protect them with all of the appropriate management or uh, power management. You wanna protect them in terms of the, the configuration and the security, but you also want to, if it's appropriate, potentially have a second device, a backup device waiting. Mm -hmm. But the key thing is, communicate to management so they understand where the vulnerabilities are and if there are solutions about preemptive solutions that can solve it what they are and what the costs are from the ceo standpoint if you're not sure what the business continuity plan is is there one as absolutely. far as the same question absolutely and a good way to think about this is don't think of the costs of the network being the extra device you might buy the extra switch for the backup or the, the cost of how, paying people to actually run and operate the network. Um, think of costs also in what does it cost you for your network to be down? What can you, how long can you afford that network to be down? How long can you afford your business 
to effectively grind to a halt and not continue forward? And how fast can you reduce that time or how, how low can we reduce that time to make sure that you're back up and running optimally and as short of a possible time as we can? Cool. So, a, uh, of course, leading into the business continuity plan, a key part of that, building out that plan would be understanding what even is connected to your network. So a way to do this is create or at least start to identify your network topology and create a network topology map. So uh, this part, it might take some time. I'm going to be totally frank with you. It's going to take some time. You got to do some wire tracing and figure out what's connected to this, what's connected on Wi-Fi to my main switches. Because if you don't know this, a, you're not sure exactly what all devices are on your network. You have that switch in the back uh, network closet that's been there since day one that no one removed. That's potentially a security risk, or you don't know if uh, people log as someone, your neighbor next door to neighboring business is getting onto your Wi-Fi somehow and using media streaming to suck up your bandwidth. Um, but understanding what's connected to your network is absolutely critical. And then you can start to figure out, okay, what happens if this part of the network goes down? What's connected to that? How will that affect this portion of the company or maybe the entire organization? So it's- And, and spoiler alert, we are gonna talk about a solution that's big on this part. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But we'll save that for a bit. Yeah. And then changing default, uh, remove default credentials. I can't tell you how many times when we talk to as a managed service provider, we talk to a potential client and they've left the admin admin or whatever the default is from the manufacturer. Hackers do get in through this stuff. The bad guys love this. So you absolutely, you want to change or remove them. So the default credentials, I mean, why make, make them work for it? You know, uh, so absolutely change those default credentials. That should be one of the first things you do when you implement these these uh, devices. And something just to add on to the very end there, sometimes it's not bad actors. Sometimes it's just people who uh, generally aren't, more, aren't malicious, curious, new employees who are wandering somewhere they shouldn't and uh, logging to something they shouldn't. And there's potential for issues to happen there. So it's not about always being afraid of maybe bad actors logging in, but it's just making sure internally no one has a silly slip up and no one has a uh, an accident in terms of accessing the wrong device and yep. keeping that airtight. Cool. Right, now on to the next five. So top one here, deploy solid cabling practices. So cabling is absolutely key still in networks today. Although uh, wireless, uh, wireless and Wi-Fi allows to connect devices without having to cable in, Frequently, um, uh, organizations will still keep everything cabled together uh, for faster speeds, reliability, uh, and general uptime. Now, the issue is if you don't have solid cabling practices, you're going to be dealing with a tangle just about everywhere, which makes tracing your network topology map that much more difficult. Um, and you might not have uh, be able to understand if the cabling is solid. Yep, absolutely. Uh, the next one on the update firmware frequently. It's been updated for a reason. And it's one of those where, whether it be performance, reliability, security, whatever, uh, you'd be amazed how many times, especially those situations where you need to refer to the uh, vendor. Uh, mm -hmm. And the vendor basically says, oh, you're four firmware updates behind. We can't help you. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to necessarily do it the day that the update comes out, but keep the boxes reasonably up to date. Absolutely. And to build on that with the third point here, if you don't have firmware, you won't get access to help from the vendor when you have an issue on that device. They'll ask you to update the firmware to the most recent one, um, but also knowing the device warranty information. The last time, the worst time, sorry, that you can possibly have this or go looking for this information is when you need to act yeah. on it, is when you need to act on it. Yeah, the way I phrase that is the worst time to learn CPR is when someone's having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, you know? it's a perfect example. Yeah, there, there, there are things that you can do to prepare for the worst that are very, very simple to do, except when you're doing it under duress. Exactly, exactly. And, and to have a policy in place of what devices do you constantly keep up to date on and maintain through manufacturer's warranty and what you don't. And again, both from, from a management standpoint and an internal IT standpoint, that's a conversation that both parties should be part of so that management understands 
that every, you know, we're only going to make maintain the warranty for three years. We replace every three years. Therefore, it's not a budgeting fight every three years. It's an expected expense. And similarly, if you try to let something last, and you try to milk every bit and bite out of it, when you do run into the problem, you can say to management, this is, you know, remember we were trying to uh, uh, save money. This is one where it, it bit us in the tucks. Absolutely. So now looking at the, the last two points, I'm going to touch on the first one first, of course, um, are all forward thinking things you need to do. Um, things that are just, we can't afford to not look at in this day and age. So the first one, adopting an attitude of continuous improvement. Main reason why is your competitors are doing it straight up. Your competitors are looking to the future and thinking, how do I do this better? How do I manage my networks more efficiently? How can I make myself a better network topology map to have better understand my network? And while it's not a direct competition to you necessarily, the cost can really have outlasting benefits moving forward. Being forward thinking about how do you fight the costs of slow networks frees up more resources to push organization further into your market, further into your business, um, and ultimately push these savings and value to your end customers. Absolutely. And to add to that, also integrate that with the business plans. So if you know your employer, whether you're the CEO or the internal IT person, again, if you know where you're going to look to expand or change or adapt or upgrade or whatever from a business process, be able to have that mindset that allows you to say, okay, that's going to mean this in terms of how you're going to improve or upgrade your network. Because you have to, if you want to deliver value, from IT. IT has to be in sync with the business process. And this is one area where you want to try to be that way. Absolutely. It's all about the future. It's all about the future. So speaking of which, understand the network of tomorrow. So I I personally love with this time that I get to be alive and I get to grow up in because there's so much new technology coming out into the world that's becoming so useful, more and more so in a business case. A big uh, area of technology is the internet of things. Um, thinking about anything from just that to devices that we interact with to wearable technology, stuff that might not have immediate impacts on your network, but as it becomes more and more used, they might start interacting with your network, whether you like it or not. Yeah, and, and here's the thing is that, and I'm gonna talk about them young kids today, they grew up with this stuff which means that they are bringing ideas that you know from my standpoint because i started with you know really really old slow crap that didn't talk to each other much so they grew up with it which means they're going to have that next generation literally and figuratively of ideas in terms of it whether it be internet of things or the use of the information from a bi standpoint all of those kind of things and they're all going to have greater and more stringent demands both in terms of network as well as internet as well as security and all of those are going to be depending upon the integration of all these devices working well i was on a conversation this morning with some manufacturing companies at a virtual networking event which you remember how that would have been a really weird term uh, this morning, and everybody was talking about robotics and Internet of Things. Every one of those devices we add is going to have an impact on the network. And they're not necessarily thinking about it. Internal IT, we bloody well better. CEOs, you bloody well better too in terms of what the impact's going to be on your network and make sure you're paying enough attention to that or whoever's doing your IT is. Off the soapbox. <laughs> Max, I think you're muted. Oh, I seem to mute myself. My apologies. Yep. No there problem. Everybody usually asks for me to mute myself. <laughs> Nobody else to mute themselves. No issue at all. Cool. So ultimately, it's a lot to cover. 
there's a lot of areas and while there's a lot of good practices to cover, uh, it's a lot to do. And we understand on top of the competing priorities and everything else you might have going on, it's a lot to do. It's a lot to kind of process and think about how am I even gonna cover this? So how do we even help with this? So this is a nice little screenshot, a small window and picture into, well, Avic, the software that my organization works with and Simplix IT uses to make network management absolutely effortless. So benefits that uh, IT really, Simplex IT really gets out of this is from a network assessment perspective, able to see into the network and figure out what's connected where. Do we have network loops? How is everything wired up? If I'm looking at a Wi-Fi from a Wi-Fi perspective, what's uh, logging into my network, what's connected to my firewalls, and where is data ultimately flowing across my network devices? And of course, it's a, and to add on to this, this is put together. I want to say automatically, and obviously we we use that term way too way too frequently, way too much. Mm -hmm. But for all purposes, there's just some small software that's running on the network that really scavenges this information, and with some configuration to the particular devices, everything is updated automatically on an ongoing perpetual basis. Mm -hmm. So you have a living, breathing document that is this map that gives you an up-to-date version of who's on the network, what the kind of device is it, and ultimately how much of my network resources are going to whatever processes it's carrying. Right. So from, from our perspective, really, it's about how do you want to invest your time. It's the one thing that you can't get more of in business, and it's the one thing that you're kind of stuck with. So you have a limited uh, team and a limited kind of opportunity to go around. Where do you focus it and how do you want to uh, deal with this moving forward? Um, yeah, so when we talk about, can you go back one slide real quick? Absolutely. So when you talk about it, when we look down through underneath the Waterloo office, we've got inventory, we've got alerts, we've got life cycles, documentation. We can also drill down into any of these devices to see what's plugged into each other, how they're connected to each other. We can see which port of a switch we're using, all of that. And all of that is pretty, I, I hate to use the word intuitive because it's way overused, but it is fairly intuitive to be able to move around here automatically. So it's a tool that answers a lot of the questions and a lot of the challenges that we talked about earlier not all of them to be sure and it has to be managed and monitored by someone who's actually using this information appropriately mm -hmm. uh, but it's a great and very very simple way to handle a lot of the challenges and you notice we're not saying it has to be all uh cisco or any particular vendor mm -hmm. uh, devices that are being used here Absolutely. It puts your network on a single pane of glass. That's that's kind of the term that we like to use. Yep. Um, gives you a central spot you can look at it um, and have that idea. And I think um, Bob raised a really, really good point. This isn't a replacement tool. This is an enhancement tool to help that your team do a better job so you can fully utilize your resources that you have available to you. Cool. Of course. So some of the things that again that we pull out here that isn't exactly listed along the sides but those how we made a big deal about configuration backups the system automatically captures those on a regular basis um network performance and proactive monitoring the system acts like a manager who never sleeps is always on keeps an idea of what's going on in the network and if something goes wrong lets you know about it giving you timely advice um and lets you know what's going on um as well as something that's very important is Understanding if someone goes into the network and changes things around, what did they do? Who logged in? And what exactly did they change? And if I don't like it, can I change it back to the old version? Well, you have all that through the system. You have ability to see what users go online to your network and look into your different devices. And if you accidentally, say, set the backup configuration to be a certain, uh, have a certain code in it, and you accidentally lock yourself out of the device, Avic is able to look into that and see, oh, you bricked yourself out of this device. Let's reload the latest backup configuration that worked so that you have the ability to go back in there and not continue forward with that error. Cool. Fantastic. So again, um, if you, uh, we want to just say a big thank you again for you guys taking the time to join us and uh, learn a little bit more with us. Um, and of course, if you do want to see your network through Avic size, Bob is your guy to go to for that.
Absolutely. And this is one of the things where, again, whether we talk about it from a pure MSP where we do all of the internal IT work for a company or co-managed, honestly, we're about 50-50 as far as what we do. Uh, either way, we will work with you. And what we'd love to do is to do a network assessment. And a part of that would be to actually run the AUVIC tools for you guys to get a feel for how your network is currently set up. And not only to see what the tool has, but also what you have. We'd love to set that up. A lot of you guys know me, you know this is, we don't do a lot of arm twisting. We don't do a lot of heavy handed, oh, everything is horrible until you sign us up or anything along those lines. Uh, but we'd love to talk to you about uh, uh, basically using AVIC to give you some eyes on your network. So contact us on that. And with that, Max, are you ready to open it up and hear some questions from people? Absolutely. Comments? Let's get out of the presentation. Hey, Bob Coppage, Crotch Shield Geek, CEO of Simplex IT, all that good stuff. First of all, thanks for watching the video and we're fast forwarding to the end to see how it turns out. Whatever. I uh, just want to let you know we've got a couple other webinars coming up uh, on March 16th. Uh, Simplex IT, we will be presenting how to calculate the cost of downtime. And that's actually just going to be walking through for both CEOs and internal IT folks, how do you really calculate what the cost of downtime is for your organization? And uh, there's also going to be a 30 by 30 as uh, well as our April webinar, which is going to be, we're going to have a couple guests here uh, from Datto who helps us with a lot of stuff, including our backup uh, business continuity disaster recovery strategies, as well as Sophos, who's our primary security partner, and we're looking to have a third guest here as well. That's going to be on April 14th from 11 a.m. to 12 uh, Eastern, and our How to Calculate uh, Downtime for Your Organization on March 16th from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, go to simplex-it.com slash events to find links and uh, to find out how to register for these free things. Bye.